Hey, welcome back to my channel, and today I'm going to teach you how to take a self-portrait. Alright, so self-portraits are super straightforward, and it's what it sounds like. You're taking a picture of yourself. Now this is a little further than a selfie, that's why some people call it the advanced selfie or a self-portrait. Now you're basically just taking a higher quality photo of yourself, but today I just want to go into the very basics to just, for somebody who hasn't done self-portrait photography, how to get great photos just straight out the gate. So I know for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of having my photo taken, I don't feel like I pose the best, I feel like... I don't want to take this long time to get the perfect photo of myself so usually if somebody is taking photos I have them snap two or three and I say yeah that's good but the thing is you probably won't look the best in those two to three photos at least maybe not the very best or exactly how you want it so one nice thing about a self-portrait is you can take photos of yourself until you get the photo you really like so for these portraits that I'm shooting right now I'm just going to use my tripod the camera and one light source. Now one piece of gear that is super helpful if you already have it or if you plan on taking self-portraits for a lot of time would be a remote trigger. Now this is something you just attach to your camera and have a remote trigger so you can snap the photos. Also depending on the camera you're shooting on it may have a feature to connect to your smartphone. Uh, this way you can actually see a playback on your phone of the photo itself or kind of what your shot's gonna look like before you take it. Now this is super helpful, but I'm shooting on a Canon 60D, which is a little bit older, so my method is just going to be uh, setting the camera on a delay, getting the photos, and then going back and looking at them. So this will take a little bit of trial and error to get the right shot set up, but once I do have it set up, it's just a matter of getting the right pose or face for the photo, and then I'm done. So let's go take those photos now, and I'll take you kind of through the step-by-steps of what I do when I'm taking a self-portrait. Okay, so as you can see here, I have a super minimal setup. It's literally just a tripod, my camera, and the one light source. And as you can see, I'm literally just in my place shooting with the lights off. So I have the one light source isolating, you know, me as the subject. I don't even have a black background behind me. I'm just using a little bit of space to make the background too dark. So I look isolated and like there's just a black background behind me. So I really like this lighting setup because it really makes you the subject looked pretty dang good with such a minimal basic setup. So I basically just set up the light on a 45 degree angle. You can adjust the light until you're happy with how it makes you look. I personally like to go with a Rembrandt light look. So where you have this little triangle on your face, uh, one side's a lot darker with some nice shadow. Now you don't have to do this. You could go head on, get a you know fully exposed photo, but I think having a little bit of shadow uh, makes you look a little nicer in portraits. So that's what I did here. As you can see on my tripod, I tilted it to the side. This is because with these self portraits, I know I'm gonna shoot them for Instagram. I'm gonna want some that are you know, in a format that's easier to put on Instagram or Facebook. Now you can just shoot horizontally if you want, but I think in general for self portraits, it looks better to shoot vertically. Okay, so you're going to set your camera on a bit of a delay. I usually did the 10 second delay uh, when I was a bit further away from my camera. This way I could get into the spot where I was shooting uh, get positioned and kind of do a pose. If you're shooting right next to your camera like I did for these portraits inside, I stuck with a three second timer, but you know, adjust it however you think works better for your shoot. And then essentially I set the timer, clicked it, got into position. Uh, you can mark on your floor a specific spot if you feel like you're not getting the focus right or if you're, you know, just not getting centered. You can just put a little piece of tape on the ground or even just throw a shoe, your phone, in front of where you're supposed to stand. And basically after that, I let it take the photo. I went back to my camera, looked at it. See, with the first few photos, I like to see if there's any things that are particularly wrong with the photos. So if I'm slightly out of focus or it's underexposed too much, overexposed a little, if you know I just wanted to go with a lower aperture so the background's a little more blurred. Now with these photos I didn't have to worry too much because I had a very controlled light source and I was just going for a black background. But these are things to keep in mind if you're shooting a self-portrait where you do have visible elements in the background and if you want a little more bokeh, uh, a shallower depth of field. One thing to note is I switched over to a white shirt because the blue shirt was just blending in with the black background and it did not look good at all. So try to have something, if you're going for a dramatic look like I am with this photo shoot, 
uh, definitely try to have some sort of brighter colored shirt, white, or even just have some sort of color so it pops in contrast from the blacked out background. Oh yeah, so even just looking at those ones, you're gonna see like they look way, way better. The white just catches the light super like, so much better because I was like a floating head before. So once you've gone through the settings to make sure you're exposed correctly, you know, you have the right aperture, your lighting looks right. It's just a matter of really posing and you know, you just kind of play with it, run a few photos over and over. Posing for photos is super awkward. I don't know if it's just me, but like, how do people do this as a job? I feel so awkward just being like, <laughs> ha, ooh. Yeah, it's, it's not good. Also, if you're doing like a photo shoot like this, have some music going. It makes it way more fun. Bump in some Machine Gun Kelly. <laughs> I don't know about you, but for me personally, I'm no model. I'm not good at posing for photos. And so it's nice to be able to take a self portrait where you don't really feel like there's people watching you or the person behind the camera is, you know, I don't know. It's always kind of weird when you're posing for a photo. I feel like I've always gotten a little nervous when taking photos where like my lip would twitch for school photos back in the day. So wasn't the best in front of the camera. So to be able to at least take the photos myself without somebody there, it's way easier and I think they turn out better for myself personally. It's also nice because you can make hella mistakes and nobody knows. <laughs> I think it really gets people intimidated at first thinking about taking you know, self portraits because you're not behind the camera adjusting all these little settings. But once you get your settings right, once you get the lighting right and you just mess around for a little bit, it's super, super easy. Now I've also done this outside taking self portraits. I really liked how they turned out, but I did notice with that it takes a little bit longer to get your lighting right, you know, since you're outside. Uh, and I did notice in editing I had to do a little bit more since, you know, you don't control your light source and in camera you're not really able to adjust as much since you're not behind the camera with your subject in the photo. So if you are going to take a self-portrait outside, I usually suggest, you know, just making sure your exposure is good and even underexpose a little bit because I notice it's easier to lighten up myself in these self-portraits afterwards in editing rather than overexposing a little bit and having the background in general just look bad. And that's literally all you have to do. It's a super easy concept, super easy setup, and it doesn't even take that much time. What's super nice too is you're not, you know, having to have another friend take your photos, which can be great if you have a friend that loves to take photos, have them take them for you because they might be better than you. But it's also nice because, you know, if you don't have that friend that takes photos, you don't have to worry about hiring a photographer to take pictures for you. You're saving some money and you're gaining experience in taking photos. Honestly, I've ended up with way better photos than I expected just by messing around and taking, you know, 30 minutes to take some pictures of myself. So yeah, if you do try out self-portraits, uh, make sure to tag me on Instagram at the Jacob Bun. I want to see how your guys has turned out. I think this is a super basic setup and a very entry level thing that's super good though. It's easy to set up and looks pretty damn good. So I'm excited to see your photos. And if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I post weekly videos on filmmaking and photography and I'll see you guys next week.